What's up, everybody? Welcome to Nemesis Insider. I am one of your hosts, James Autumn, and tonight I have my buddy Pally with me. As you can see, he's looking so suave and smooth down there. What's going on, Pally? Who's Pally? Wait, what? What's... I don't know who you're talking about. Wait, who are you? I thought Pally was going to be here. I, I don't know. I don't know what Pally. Oh. I have no idea who you're talking about. Well, introduce yourself, sir. I would love to know who you are. Hi, I'm Pally. Oh, hey, Pally. What's going on? It's um, you know, <laughs> you know, I'm just um, I'm hosting hosting insider today. I don't know who this who this other guy is though. I don't know either, but uh, yeah, it's got a nice beard at least. But the the voice could be worked on. Like I've I've, I've always is, thought it a, was. That is a luscious beard. It is <laughs> yep. Yeah, just got trimmed the day. <laughs> he... All right. Anyways, Pally. We got a great guest with us today. Uh, I believe you uh, you go way back with this person. If you'd like to introduce them, that it's, it's totally up to you. No pressure or anything, but pressure. Yeah, for sure. Uh, her and I go way back. We used to wait. Well, I mean, we still touch base and role play. You know, sometimes here and there. But we used to role play in uh, Conan Exiles a while back. We had a lot of fun. Uh, we made a lot of jokes that I'm not allowed to repeat. Um, and. Uh, <laughs> Her name is uh, Heart on My Sleeve, and she is a wonderful role player, one of the best out there. Well, welcome to the sl to the show, Heart on My Sleeve. Welcome. Hello, I'm here. And y'all probably didn't see it, but I worked like thirty minutes on making that image fade in and out for you. So <laughs> that's adorable. <laughs> Very impressive. Such hard work. Yeah, Start until I looked hard. up a YouTube video and got it fixed in two minutes, and I was like, oh, <laughs> oh, that's how technology Love that works. For you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so typically how this works is uh, we ask you about your streaming origins and all that good stuff. So how did the heart on my sleeve journey start for streaming? I've always wanted to know this. Well... The first stream I ever, or first game, rather, I ever, ever streamed was actually Smite. <laughs> or not, does anyone know that game? I've played Smite from time to time, yep. Yeah. Yep. That was my first ever stream. And then we had the painful, painful journey of learning how to play Ark live. Ooh, Ark. Stream. Ouch. <laughs> yeah, vanilla Ark. So... <laughs> glutton for punishment then and then we kind of as it so happened kind of evolved into a primarily role play streamer i started doing role play like pally said in conan exiles on uh let's see the first server was a hyborian age back when that was still up and going and we've been doing that ever since we do do occasionally some other games sometimes like phasmo but um yeah, primarily we are a filthy roleplay nerd. We love it. So, you? <laughs> so like you both do roleplaying a ton. For someone who hasn't had much experience with it on the level that you all have, what goes into creating a character and then basically living it for hours at a time on a stream? Oh gosh, well, excuse me. It can go really, really far ends of the spectrum. You can sit there and work on creating a character with a very, very in-depth backstory, like for weeks, like who their parents were, what, who their grandparents were, where were they from, what did they do before they entered this world, or you can just wing it, come up with a name, and just see where the character evolves. In real <laughs> That's time. what I do. <laughs> But yeah, so it, it really runs the gamut. I typically, my more serious characters, I have very, very evolved backstories to, um, for instance, uh, the character that Pally met me on, whose name is Emma, has existed in various versions of the same character, just across different platforms. I've role-played her in Ark, in Conan, 
Seven Days to Die, and now currently in GTA. So she <laughs> has had quite the journey. <laughs> oh, and um, Daisy, I forgot about that. that was oh, nice. nice. <laughs> so what about the GTA 5 version? Because I saw you were streaming that earlier. Uh, mm -hmm. Did you play as Emma tonight or, or what character? Um, tonight I played as Gabby, one of my criminal characters. And then mm. I also played as Division Chief Mommy Sharps. <laughs> <laughs> Mommy okay. Sharps. Have, have you, um, I don't suppose y'all met Mommy yet, have you? Oh, all right. All right. <laughs> That's good. I like it. She likes to put the naughty boys and girls in handcuffs and behind bars because they crave the discipline. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> wow, that's yeah, that crazy. That's a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> so are these just like voices that you've had on tap or did you have to develop these over time? Because for someone like me, it's it's hard to do any kind of accent because I already have an accent and I can barely understand myself. So like what goes into you making an accent? Hmm. Um, some of my characters voices have evolved from just complete accidents um, for instance, I have another char character who I played on Conan named Kelpie, and she's like a little pixie type girl, right? And she sounds like this, kind of like she's from an anime. And I discovered her voice by getting frustrated with something one day with my husband, and I just went, mm, just like that. And then I just started talking in that voice, and that's how that voice was born. She sounds like a hyperactive valley girl. <laughs> <laughs> no, she I love actually. it actually a pixie raised by an orc so yeah. <laughs> wow <laughs> <laughs> whereas if you have emma's voice she started off as a really really big nerdy character but for, and she was doing on adventures and everything like that and she kind of wore a retainer like she had a big overbite but that voice was really hard to maintain so this is kind of how it evolved more up in the nose and so i could do it forever without hurting myself I love Emma. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the voice you originally heard and met, right, Pally? Kurgan and Emma have had some interesting conversations. Ooh, tell tell me about this Kurgan. Was this a Conan <laughs> Exiles day or? Yeah, I we should not talk about Kurgan. We should not. Oh, oh. there's a lot that Kurgan. comes with talking about Kurgan that that we're not allowed to talk about. <laughs> okay, what's the what's the brand friendly cliff notes you could possibly give? This is a challenge for you now. Brand friendly cliff notes. Mm -hmm. uh, everything, everything's about. I can't say it. <laughs> <laughs> There's no brand friendly. <laughs> oh my goodness! I know there. There is no brand friendly. He's just a guy with a with a really really hyperactive Brooklyn accent. Kind of sounds like a gangster trying to be a. <laughs> or, or, or want to be gangster, you know. It, the, the, there's no brand friendly cliff notes, no. <laughs> like even his in character wife is not brand friendly. Oh dear! So, so you were married in the role play space? Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, that's another question for both of you. Like, how do relationships mm -hmm. work in the role play space? Because obviously, if you're doing something like a marriage or or something like that. With these people, say maybe up to four to six hours a session. Like, how do you? Uh, how does that work? That's that's gotta be weird. Like, I, I think that lines can be blurred there between reality and the the fiction of what you're doing. But like, I don't know. I don't get it. So that's why I'm just asking y'all. Only weird if you make it weird. <laughs> Is that so? Okay. That's a fair assessment. I mean, it's it's just like any on uh, any kind of fictional romance that actors play. I mean, at the end of the day, you're actors playing characters. You're not really married to this person. You're not really in love with this person. It's just the characters that are interacting. Some people can do relationship role play and they can do it very well. Um, 
and some people aren't comfortable with it and that's okay too um and some people tend to take it very seriously and take it out of character and yeah <laughs> that can happen but that that's when you have to respectfully you know you have to be respectful of your fellow role player if you are doing something they're not comfortable with then you know you have to adjust and make those uh, am amendments into your role play because it's at the end of the day it's supposed to be enjoyable for both sides whether it be relationship role play or um enemy role play like at the end of the day it's a real person behind the screen but they are characters but you still have to be respectful i like that that's really cool to know and uh obviously i've i've read up on you know a lot of streamer culture being a streamer myself and i've seen like where these servers wait can you're go a streamer by. yeah yeah, like when I'm not taking my uh, three month breaks out of the year, you know, I actually uh, do some content, man. It, it's it's crazy. <laughs> wow. Yeah, right. That's what I said when I did it. It's like, wow. You know? <laughs> but like, uh, what are the rules of etiquette for role play, you would say? Rules of etiquette. Um, uh, rules of, I don't think like there's the rules of and etiquette. Oh, wow. Well, that's easy. Uh, go, go ahead. Uh, go, go, yeah, you, just you like, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, the, like the main rules are like you know, it's it has to do with you know. Well, I mean, James, you don't role play. There's power gaming. There's meta gaming. There's things you don't do. Meta gaming. Uh, meta gaming. Do you know what meta gaming is, James? I have an idea of what it is, but I need you to break it down kindergarten style it's for me here. Kind of, kind of in the word, but um, meta gaming would be. And correct me if I'm wrong, Hart. It's okay. been a hot minute since I've actually had to define it, but uh, it'd be if you learn something, like you, you're in character and you're doing something, and then out of character you learn that a character that you learn something and you use it in character. That would be metagaming. You're not supposed to do that. Every even if you know it out of character, you have to learn it in character before you can use it in character. Yeah, like a good example I always use is, let's say you're watching someone stream and you saw someone rob a bank. You yeah. can't then go and see that person on the server later in character and go, I know you're a filthy bank robber because that would be metagaming. You gain, you are using information that you gained <sighs> outside of role play and using it in character. And that's a big no, no, you don't do that. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah it's one I of the biggest issues. Problem. Cause it's one of the biggest issues. Cause there's a lot of the times it's very, very, very hard to prove it. Um, yeah, it's, they can, if you know someone's doing it or if you suspect it can be very very difficult to prove yeah, yeah. it's um it's almost like um if i could equate it to people who are more familiar with like first person shooting and streaming like that it's kind of like stream sniping in a way like okay. you're yeah. you are using that stream to your advantage in a way that you shouldn't be <laughs> Now, generally, the what are the there repercussions? There is stream sniping and role play. There is stream sniping and role play. Absolutely, there is. Yeah, and that's also frowned upon. <laughs> yeah, like, like you, you'll there. Are, there are certain like we won't name names, Hart, but you probably can guess. I'm not going to name names, but uh, you can guess who I'm talking about. Uh, there are some people who we have uh, a friend. His name. Well, I, I don't know if I should mention him, but he's a fairly big streamer, and he. Uh, he he goes under the name of a very like I'm not going to name the name, but a very uh, large tusked um, water creature. Uh, she knows what I'm talking about. I do. Um, I do. Yeah, love him. And he's by a the way. Love him. Yeah, he, love him. He's amazing, and he's a fairly big streamer. He he'll go into a role play server, um, and he'll all of a sudden, as soon as he logs in, you'll have a hundred people coming to where he is, mm -hmm. and ruining any organic role play that he had. Oh wow! Uh, and there, there are people who were in his, like his, uh, his group that would only log in when he was on, uh, that kind of thing. You know, all generally considered stream sniping, in my opinion. Okay, yeah, I could see where that would be a huge problem, especially if you do have a bigger audience on Twitch or whatever streaming platform to try and do something that you're passionate about. That that does sound like it's a bit of an issue for sure. Does that affect? Uh, the other people around that are like doing the regular role play, does that like hurt them when those viewers or whatever come into that, that space? It can, it absolutely can because mm -hmm. um, it, it makes it unfair for those people who have an organic interaction with that person already 
to all of a sudden now their interaction has completely been derailed or interrupted or anything because of all these people who just magically all of a sudden know where this person is <laughs> exactly <laughs> where to find them so yep. it, it can be um it, it can be a very negative experience um but and th that's why the role play community has these rules and guidelines and a lot of the role play servers are allow listed where you have to fill out an application and prove that you do you have read the rules and you do agree to abide by them and so that way everyone can have a good experience role playing together okay that's awesome at least there's some rules in place there's some order to all the chaos that can happen in that so you know uh that leads me to ask you heart like why role playing out of every other genre category whatever you could do with your content creation time like what draws you to role play and makes you want to you know frequently do that I really, really enjoy it, obviously, because I've been doing it for so, so many years. Um, but I, you know, my dream job one day would be to be a voice actor. I would love to be a voice in a video game or in a cartoon. And this is just a way for me to be able to kind of live that and do that. And plus, you know, real life sucks these days. It really, really does. Mm -hmm. I can agree. <laughs> And so to be able to have that escape and just for a little bit, just walk this different life through this character and get to experience these different things is it's a, it's a, it's like an escapism. It really, really is. And I've just always been ever since I found out about it, like actually the, our, our tusked friend who Pally was just talking about was uh, the first person who I ever saw do this with a video game and it was arc he was uh playing a character named fabio magnifico and now everyone's <laughs> who we're talking about mm -hmm. um in arc and i saw this and i'm like i didn't know this was a thing i didn't know that people role played in video games and i'm like i can do that i want to do that and that's kind of where i i got involved with it i was watching his streams for forever and applied to various role play servers finally got accepted got my foot in the door and that's how i just kind of came into this niche genre of because i just <laughs> i enjoy it so much i do do some variety uh, games sometimes but i just i always end up going back to role play just because i love it well that's amazing it, it should be it should be noted that like uh, as far as voice acting goes a lot of role players on twitch end up doing voice acting oh wow it happens. really yeah the same guy we just talked about, he has done voice acting in video games. Oh, yeah. Uh, any examples you could give? Uh, off the top of my head, no. And I think it would give it away. But let's just... Hart would agree when I say he has the voice of a Greek god. <laughs> okay. Yep. Yes, he does. Um, he mm -hmm. has been often accused, as myself as well, of using a voice changer to do his character's voices. Um, that's uh, how good he is. <laughs> <laughs> he has he, he has destroyed his vocal cords doing some characters like Korgoth the Mad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I believe it. James, we'll I'll send you a link after stream. <laughs> yeah, yeah, please do. I'd love to know more. Like, again, this is just my unique chance to ask a role player streamer like why they do what they do and what are the rules. How do you navigate it, especially when you start streaming it? That's like like we already talked about. That comes with its own set of issues and things to navigate around so i i definitely want to take in as much of this as, as i can i actually did a little bit years ago for arc primitive uh role-playing servers it was kind mm -hmm. of fun i didn't i didn't keep up with it consistently i think i only did like six months worth of it but it was still which, fun uh, which arc servers were you on <coughs> God, anything was... i would know have we met in character <laughs> before Oh my god, like, uh, that was 2015. Oh, I cannot. Wow. I cannot remember way back then. Oh, and I did Rust RP. I remember that much too, but that was kind of like bouncing around server to server because it wasn't as developed or in, rules weren't as enforced then because I actually hit trolls back in the day on that where it was like I, I didn't want to continue doing it because I'd get attacked and stuff on, you know, my own streams and stuff. Oh yeah, and and that can happen too, which is why I t I tend to gravitate more towards the 
application allow listed role play servers. I mean, there are open role play servers out there that you can just jump on without an application, just go and role play. But yeah, your 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 risk of being <laughs> trolled or suddenly having to end your stream because someone is shouting things they shouldn't be shouting um, while you're streaming is very very high. <laughs> wow, happy any, happy any worse than the things Kurgan shouts. <laughs> yeah, I can't. <laughs> It gets bad. <laughs> so we actually but, got a viewer yeah. question here for Hart. Uh, Krizzy's Creations asks, uh, how is it doing RP in games with your IRL husband? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Chrissy. Nice to hear from you. <laughs> how is it? Uh, my it's VTuber's good. doing the um, eyebrow thing. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, with, I've, I've actually gotten this question a couple of times before. Um, I do also role play with my IRL husband as various characters and we have played characters before that, um, they, they the characters themselves are married. We've played characters before where they're not married. Um, and, um, we, uh, let's see. Oh gosh. Um, I forget where I was going with this. But yeah, so like our characters don't necessarily have to be together um, when we role play together. We uh, go off and do our own things often, but it, it is a lot of fun. Um, it's it, it kind of um, one of the things we sometimes do is a uh, little light fourth wall breaks for the sake of comedic effect. Sometimes like there was this one time when we were playing together and he hadn't logged in on his character for a few days. And so the other people in our group kept asking me well, when's he going to wake up? And so I would just, you know, be like, I don't know. When is he going to wake up? And, you know, <laughs> things like that. <laughs> you know, busting him a little bit. <laughs> it, it, it can be fun. It, it, it oftentimes is very fun. Okay, okay. Now you mentioned wake up. That's like a term for they're not online yet, right? Because yeah, you can't yeah. oh, say yeah. certain so things, we'll right? Terms. Yeah, so... um. Typically, you don't say someone's offline. You say they're asleep or they're going to sleep or like, you know, when you're getting ready to log off, I'm feeling really tired, you guys. I'm going to go lay down, take a nap. Um, one phrase that has been used so much in the community that, um, and I think we're trying to get away from it, is um, when you have to go AFK, some people go, I'm going to go be in my head for a second. I've heard that one. I've, I've watched a few and I was like, what do they mean by that? That's all they mean is they're going AFK. But the, these days we try to uh, get people to just be like, "Oh, I'm I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna go use this bush over here," or you know, you know, if they've got to go AFK, you know, just make it a little more organic to explain your absences. And you see, I always took a little bit of a different approach to the in your head thing. Like uh, if I if I have to very quickly go and do something RL, I'll be like, "Hold on, I need to think about something real quick." Puppy. Sorry, I'm distracted by the puppy. <laughs> So what are some other terms that uh, that you guys use that viewers may not pick up on right away? Oh, uh, hmm, I think. See, it's easy to, it's easy to oh. name them when you're using them, but. Yeah, um, typically um, servers have to have daily restarts, sometimes multiple times mm -hmm. a day. And so when you're gearing ready for a restart, typically people say like, oh, there's a storm on the horizon. Everyone needs to seek shelter. And that's how you explain server restarts. Uh, okay. Ending. <laughs> um, uh, let's, oh gosh, what's another one? Uh, or there's the like you know, when we're when we're in Conan and the server crashes, we'll uh, we'll, we'll blame. Uh, well, sometimes I don't know if you ever heard it, Hart, but we'd blame Fun Crom. Fun Crom, <laughs> yeah, Fun Crom. <laughs> it's just a plan. If if you're not familiar with the game, James. Um, Conan Exiles is made by Funcom. One of mm -hmm. the gods in the game is named Crom, and uh, he so gives you nothing. Crom. Right? He's the one that gives yeah. you nothing. Yeah, he gives yep. nothing. <laughs> yeah, Kurgan loves him. Kurgan's a Cromite. I always go for Crom too, because it's like, huh, <laughs> this world don't owe me nothing. I'm gonna make my way, <laughs> and that's why we get along, James. <laughs> Word, word. Do, do you still do Conan, Pally? Now I'm asking you questions. Uh, when when the opportunity arises, it is still my favorite game to role play in. Hmm. Is that something you would navigate with me as a complete newbie to this thing? Ooh. Oh, I, I I love working with with, uh, with fresh meat. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
Yep. Oh, I'd come along for this ride. Oh, that'd yep. be great. <laughs> there we go. It sounds like we might. I don't know if I, I. I don't know if I'd give. I don't know if you're ready to to be with Kurgan. Might bring <laughs> back my old buddy White Wolf. You know. <laughs> did I ever meet White Wolf? You did, and then the server just kind of died. Uh, that was. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. White that. Wolf the Wise. Oh, that's right. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I still remember the first time, the first time, because like we had played it off as if we had known each other in character. Yeah, that was when and I was he, playing Sylvie the Viking Queen. I remember that. Yeah, and he gets down on one knee to kneel down to his queen. And then as he's standing up, he's having a hard time. And you're like, don't soil yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, I, I had plans for time. White Wolf, too. <laughs> oh, we all had grand plans for that season. Yeah. Yep. So things happen. Things happen. I am actually currently uh, playing a little character in Conan. I just haven't been uh, streaming it. I was contemplating streaming it. She's a descendant of a character I've played before, and I don't think uh, you ever met that character, Pally. Do you, were you around for the uh, the fishing village season that we did? I believe so. I don't know if I know all the characters, but I remember the fishing village. Okay uh yeah because uh, the the fi there were a couple fishing villages it was uh the season with the fish village that actually had the fish people quote unquote <laughs> i remember that <laughs> okay yeah so it's a descendant of that character that i played that season <laughs> oh that's great so uh yeah. laxy 87 is asking about uh when will an emma body pillow be uh be distributed out <laughs> oh laxy <laughs> Okay. I feel like so, this is a question that's come up before. <laughs> so for context, Laxi is one of my lead mods for my channel. We Ooh. love her. Uh, we adore her. She does so much for us. And um, one of the things we said that we would look into one day, because she's been asking for it, is an Emma waifu body pillow. <laughs> that would sell. That's her, that's her favorite character that I play. <laughs> and um we would just need to get art drawn up of it um so i guess i would need to contact ceo <laughs> there's no one better <laughs> and um get her to do the waifu pillow and of course if i'm doing it for laxi it's got to be a waifu pillow with various sides to it so, um... <laughs> so she could finally have her dream of taking emma home with her <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's that's why role playing with, with you when you're doing Emma is so much fun because like it's yeah, I'm always laughing. It's a really fun voice. I, I, I dig that. I, I I wish I was there for some of those streams. I'm gonna have to start checking that out a lot more. Oh yeah, it's great. Right now, um she's actually um the Emma now that we're playing in GTA, she had been a paramedic for years. And I'm, I'm talking real life years on a Twitch RP, the server that we're currently playing on. And now we're entering a new arc to where she's going to be a park ranger. And so they're <laughs> going to give her a gun and let her, <laughs> let her protect the animals of the forest. And she's super <laughs> duper excited to be a park ranger and teach ethical hunting practices. <laughs> love that <laughs> a real by the book kind of character then oh emma uh <laughs> well um let me give you an example so the kind of medical treatment that emma would offer um to see if they're conscious <laughs> can you hear me are you conscious? Let me do this very medical, very scientific consciousness test. Licks finger, sticks it here, and swirls around. Oh, no, it, wet willy. Oh, is, no. it, is it the medical way that we check and see if someone's faking it or if they're really unconscious? <laughs> A wet willy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that, that would wake me up. Uh, we would wake a lot of people. Up. Is is that something real EMS do? Uh, wow! <laughs> God, I hope maybe not. they wow. should. <laughs> <laughs> I really, really hope not. We're gonna have to ask some professionals here and figure this out. <laughs> I know a guy. I'll just go up to him and ask, "Hey, you ever given someone a wet willy to revive him?" 
I'm sure that'll go over well. It's the perfect way to see if they're faking it or not. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> oh, oh, good times. But yeah, she, she's she been paramedic for years, so it's time for a new arc for her. It's a new chapter for Emma. Very excited about it. And she is also a complete polar opposite to our mommy character, obviously. Um, one of the... <laughs> One of the running jokes on uh, the the server now or the canon is that the the significant other Emma has um, is frustrated because Emma doesn't do anything besides hold hands <laughs> at this point. <laughs> and um, as as you heard earlier, mommy's not like that at all. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So th there's there's a huge difference and. Is it easy for you to just transition in and out of these characters? Like, do you, do you have to prep for streams? Especially, I know I know earlier you mentioned like you were going to do character A for a little bit, then character B and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Like, do you have to warm up between those? Or can you just like log out of one, log into the other and just go for it? Uh, sometimes. Um, what I typically do between characters is I'll, you know, take my little five minute stretch break just to clear my head, clear the palette and everything, and then, um, go into it. There has been a few instances where I have almost used the wrong voice for a character because I wasn't paying enough attention. Um, and, and that was, um, was tragic, but it was also hilarious at the same time. Because we we just played it off that um Emma was in a closet somewhere and then she ran away. <laughs> <laughs> You're different than me. I, like there's there's times like I have a hard time switching characters mid mid uh, session. I you know like there there's times like I play Kurgan so much mm -hmm. that like uh, I'll be playing. I, I played another character in Red Dead a few weeks ago called Buck Dingles, and uh, he's got a very you did. <laughs> he's got a very Cletus accent oh please please oh, give it cletus. to us come on he sounds yeah, a lot like on. cletus Buford. <laughs> um but but there were times when i would stream so late having worked all day i would get so tired that i'd be accidentally slipping in and out of kurgan like <laughs> as weird as that sounds like i'd slip into the kurgan voice like oh wait no i'm wrong character okay <laughs> like it's hard it's hard for me to switch between characters mid-session okay what's the kurgan voice but a Kurgan voice, well, it's just a, you know, it's just a little bit of a Brooklyn, maybe a little bit of a you know, Bronx accent, a little bit, you know, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> okay. There's okay. more I, I could, well, there's, no, there's, there's more I, sh I would say, but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Can you at least say You're car? You're not allowed to say, remember, can't do that. <laughs> no, I can't say that. No, that's, that's a bad word. Yeah. Bad word. We've, we've, we've had discussions. Kurgan, Kurgan wouldn't, Kurgan wouldn't say car. There's no cars in the exiled lands. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. But with, yeah. your, with your accent, I just need to hear it. Get in the car. Get in the car right now. Uh, that amuses me. <laughs> get in the car, go get me a cup of coffee. <laughs> Gotta clock the car. <laughs> oh, I got it. Like, there's like a little bit of Massachusetts in there, too. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Dude, this is this is so awesome. I don't know how I can ever transform my voice to do any kind of different tones but i'm i'm just in awe of both of you just how easy it is for you right now you don't have to there, there's on, there's give, give there's try. people just... there's people that do the same character all the time and it's always great mm -hmm. and it's their own voice co is a good example yep CO <laughs> you think she's really putting on a uh... voice no she actually sounds like paimon from genshin impact no she does <laughs> okay a little she bit does. a little bit Unhear it. I can't now. You ruined it. You ruined it all. So there's actually like but, a, a real cutesy Paimon voice out there. Wow. Yes. <laughs> she's got it. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, just, with anything, it comes with a uh, with practice. Um, I mean, and, and just, some people just use a higher pitch of their normal voice. I'm sure you could do it. Go on, James. Give it a try. To do it. Do a higher pitch. Just I, do I a thought... higher pitch of your normal voice. I thought I was Send already it through the nose. Pitched. Through the nose. Yeah. Send it up here. What you got? What you got? Yeah, let's put a little nasal into it. You know what I'm talking uh, about? A little nasal. Little nasal. Like, like yeah. this. A little nasal. A little nasal. Yeah, there you go. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're doing it. 
Okay. Well, doesn't take much. That one was easy. <laughs> I don't like, know how even, well even he then. Up with it. Yeah, I even got like I kind of got a vibe from him that he would be a a calculus tutor for somebody. Like he'd come over to my <laughs> house and I'll tutor you in calculus, and we'll, you'll get straight A's from now on. That's, that's Honestly, James, you could tutor me here. any day. Oh, yeah. heyo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, like, re like real talk though. Like in role play, people don't typically frown on. Like, if you have a voice changer, people don't frown on that either, unless you're making some ridiculous voice. Like, if you just wanted to raise your voice just a few octaves, no one's gonna say anything. Like, it's mm -hmm. it's okay if you wanted to use a voice changer. Just don't go crazy with it. Now, by go so crazy, weird. what's what's the limit? What's what's the line for a lot of uh, uh, role players? I don't know if my voice change effects will come through. Do they come through <laughs> here? I don't think they do. I think you did the I high think, pitch one. Yeah, I heard the high pitch. Oh one. yeah, so like the limit you you wouldn't you wouldn't uh, you know yeah, that's a like little much. Something where you can't be understood clearly. As long as you can be understood clearly, yeah, people are pretty accepting of voice changers and whereas whatever whereas you something do. like this would probably be fine. Yeah. This is more James Earl Jones than anything. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Well, that's cool yeah. then. I know a lot of uh, <laughs> software like Voice Mod and everything can open up, uh, you know, the door to doing different voices. But like some of those are really indecipherable too. Well, I think yeah. uh, the best way to go, like it's an expensive route, but the best way to go is to have a mixer or a, like a hardware solution that does it. Like I have a Go XLR. Yeah. Yeah, which is really, really excellent for that, just because you can yeah. modify it on the go, and it doesn't clip in and out like voice mod usually does. Yeah, and it has like the the, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it just did it just did a, a minor bleep there, just barely. Yep. <laughs> it might be like your a, noise gate or something. I think it I is my noise gate. I have as well, and I know I'm completely underutilizing it. Like one of the things that I do the most common with it is when I'm on my cop character, Lily, she'll pull out her megaphone and just go out and say, Attention, Grove Street. We have reports of naughty drug dealers in the area. If you see anybody dealing the dirty, dirty, give us a call at 911. Thank you. Have a good day. <laughs> <laughs> That was like that was amazing. <laughs> Use it for. <laughs> and like you can you can go as far as like robot voices. You can auto tune. Like there, I've seen role play <laughs> characters, and like usually you wouldn't think they'd get away with it, but characters that their entire shtick is that they speak in auto tune, and it works. <laughs> they make it work. So <laughs> that was endless crazy. options. <laughs> God, that is so awesome. Like, did you rehearse that line? Is that just like one you commonly have in your head, Heart? That that was like perfect. Um, all all, all role play is improv. It's it's just what what just you you come off with it off the top of your head. Mm -hmm. Um, very rarely have I ever been involved in scripted role play. Um, and even then, when someone like um, uh, for instance, one of my roles um for Twitch RP is I'm a Twitch RP ambassador, which basically means if someone has a role play story that they need um assistance to uh, to push with um a character to play a character that they need um for example like someone needed someone to play a character to come and stalk and harass this other character so they'll put in a ticket hey can you play this such and such character this is their little backstory and this is the kind of character that they would embody and so yeah you <clears throat> take what they have given you but you still play that character as it were it's not scripted out you just you make it up as you go for the that's, dialogue <laughs> that's so cool so like you can actually build scenarios to what you want so like you has that opened up any opportunities for you to actually feel like a voice actor and like you know do recorded videos and little movies or something absolutely i gosh i wish i knew how to um edit um because i would i would make my own little videos of my characters and tell my own little stories and everything like that i absolutely love doing stuff like that <laughs> and i love coming up with a uh, new different voices it's uh i would love it so much that's really cool though so you said there's a, a like a, a request system you, you call it a ticket right and yeah you you submit a ticket for um 
if you need like admin assisted help telling a story because you know admins have more tools than the normal players would have and they can help to facilitate and help you tell your character's story that's yeah. really awesome mm-hmm so like you've been doing this on the same server for years now you said or oh gosh um I have been uh, on the Twitch RP server for, gosh, very, very many years, ever since all they did was um, ARC, and that was all they did was ARC, and then they introduced uh, GTA, now they've got a Red Dead uh, Redemption server as well that they've got, but I've played on other servers too, like I've played on Hyborian, I've played on Reforged Blade, those are Conan servers, Yeah. Um, currently playing on Weavers of Fate for Conan, um, yeah, just different. I haven't heard of that one, I might, I might get the info for that one from you you should it's a season just started not too long ago and um they do um another thing that that this particular server does is they do admin facilitated events as well so they will if you've got a storyline you want to push they will help you and come spawning creatures and everything like that for you to fight and help push your story forward and stuff like that awesome so you mentioned a season what does that mean is there like a overarching storyline that you go with and then you have your own storylines underneath it or what, what's the deal with the seasons it can vary so um it depends on the server a season is uh just typically the beginning of a wipe to the end of a wipe and um then when the season ends the server wipes and either the stories from the previous wipe can carry over or you just have a complete lore wipe and a completely different story Sometimes there will be admin driven groups. Um, I believe right now Weavers has two core groups that you can apply to, and they're the two factions, or you can create your own independent group and not be a part of those factions at all. So you can either go with the story, the main storyline that's on the server, or you can make your own. It's it's you know, stuff like that. Okay. It just gives you more options. That's really cool. So, like, is it always like a war setting in Conan? Because you know, obviously, you're in a hostile kind of wasteland already from the typically, base game. Typically, there there's battle <laughs> battle driven <laughs> role play stories in a Conan, but then sometimes you have characters who want nothing to do with that and choose to just uh, run, run a bathhouse or a tavern and want nothing <laughs> to do with any of the combat stuff at all. Ah, or, yes, my um, friend Cletus. <laughs> he is notorious for doing the ta uh, tavern mm -hmm. or this one season um we had i was part of a group that was um putting on live performances and the group was called the larry swinger show and uh, it's a knockoff of you you know or the real life show but we would have different guests on and so like tell us a bit about your life in the exiled lands and why your baby daddy did this it was just you know a big <laughs> spin off of, it was you were around for that but i think weren't you i probably? believe i was yeah yeah you were <laughs> and, and we, we played emma and um she was the costume and makeup designer for this particular group and we had nothing to do with combat at all so. <laughs> And that's so much on what fun. kind of character you want to have. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's awesome. It seems like doing a, a bigger picture thing always kind of turns me away. I, I like going my own route. I like that there is kind of like a main arc out there, but it just seems like that would be overwhelming to do like a, a war style one or, you know, that, that's something I've always kind of disagreed with. I've always disagreed with the whole main arc thing. Everyone has their own arc. There is no main arc. Everyone's arc is their own arc. Well, that's why I thought uh, there's the fun no, of there's no, was. there's no star. There's no star of a season or anything like that. Yeah. yeah. There are certainly arcs that have more people involved, but there's no star of a season. You're the star of your own role play. So you're never like forced into participating in those uh, server main stories or anything like that. No. Yeah. You don't Absolutely have to not. like, um, they'll have an overarching server lore and server history and say, yeah. Hey, this is, this is what's happened up until this point. You can choose to be affected by this or you can choose not to be. It's it's mm -hmm. they they leave it very open to where you don't you don't have to be affected by it at all if you don't choose to. It goes along with uh, the the role play rules we were talking about earlier that uh, Pally mentioned briefly, power gaming. Power gaming is when you force action onto another character or um, do an action to where their character has no chance to respond or to say no to what you're doing. 
Okay. So what you're both telling me is that uh, role-playing for these games isn't as scary as it seems, especially when you see these people who do, you know, almost 40 hours a week dedicating themselves to a character, server, things like that. It's not as, uh, it's not as scary as, as, as it seems to me, like, when they have these full lures behind what they do. It's, it's, so I, I no. can actually get into this. Absolutely. Anyone can get into yeah. it. And, like... You know, if they there there could be a guy who spends forty hours a week developing a, his own lore and or their own lore and their own story, but then you could see this person who who has two hours a day, and they have like the best story you've ever seen. Like it doesn't matter. Yeah. 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 Like I said, you you could fully flesh out an entire family history for your character, or you could just say, "I'm gonna play Bob, and we're just gonna see what Bob does today." And <laughs> do it as you go and it's it's really up to you there's really yep. no right or wrong way to do it as long as you're respectful and follow the rules of the server <laughs> like when i make a character like kurgan for example is a really good example because like i didn't come up with a backstory until i had to and even then every single time i was asked it was on the fly uh like i never pre-planned anything the only thing i did i pre-planned was his accent and his name <laughs> that's it like the last time I played Kurgan, I don't know if you saw it, but he was on like he, Kurgan always has like every season I play Kurgan, there is like a shtick that he does. Like one, some seasons it's, you know, oh, I'm, I'm in love with Shay. And then like another season is uh, like the most recent season was he was addicted to bodybuilding <laughs> and the, oh the mod that they had allowed you to grease up your whole body. So he was walking around in like a, a man, uh, like a, a banana hammock. <laughs> <laughs> and he was saying hey, Korgoth look how vascular I am I'm so vascular <laughs> that mod, mod still exists by the way it still very much exists love it <laughs> you can look as shiny as you want to I think I've actually been on Conan servers that have used that mod that is pretty greasy yep <laughs> Well, that's really cool. It sounds like, Pally, you're just going to have to take me to the exiled lands and, and show me what this is all about. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> like there's, there's a, and, and the best role play, and Hart can agree with me here, is when you like organically come up with like the funniest stuff with, with your peers. Like, like she has seen how, well, Hart and I bounce off each other when, when I'm Kurgan and she's Emma. We bounce off <laughs> each other really well. And then like Kurgan and Korgoth bounce off each other really well. <laughs> like, uh, I don't know if you were ever there. It was a Castle Savage thing, and Korgoth was... Kurgan had passed out, and someone was trying to revive him. Korgoth said, make sure he doesn't swallow his tongue. So, like, I naturally try and feed into that by starting to make a choking sound. <laughs> and and I, had, I had our tusked friend dying, like, cackling on, on his stream. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And Chrissy says, and remember, there are those of us that spend hours with the streamers through their whole story. That's that's beautiful. That's beautiful to say because that means you have a lot of loyal people that love what you do and you know, it's it's always good to acknowledge them and thank them. Oh yeah, ab absolutely. Like a lot a lot of my community has been there since uh the creation of a lot of the different characters and so they have seen them grow and change into what they are now and it, it's actually really nice. Um because um, I don't know. It's I don't know how else to describe it other than it, it makes me feel all warm and fuzzy that the characters that I've created, people remember them and they like them and they want to see more of them. I'm 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 on that boat. Yep, I want to see more. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So like we have about three minutes left if you want to say anything to the audience and you know talk about yourself do, this is your chance to do a little bit of a self promo heart let them know where they can find you what they can expect all that good stuff the floor is yours all right well um as you see my name is heart on my sleeve you can find me on twitch heart on my sleeve i do primarily role play content but i am known to play some variety games and um play them very poorly but we do try our best and sometimes we even role playing games where role play is not even called for. So that's all, you know, something you get to look forward to as well. Actually, we're going to be playing Daisy soon as Emma. Not, not, like, we're going to go on a non role play server and play Daisy as Emma, but, but it's not a role play server. And, and see how long it takes people to shoot her in the face. 
listen, it's gonna just, be just, just put IRL role play. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty I used to role much. play in DBD sometimes. And that's what made it fun for me again. Oh, oh yeah? How did that work? I just put on the Kurgan act. Like, so obviously the other players can't hear me. But it's entertaining for the viewer, right? Put on the Kurgan accent and play Ace Visconti, which is the, the only character that fits the Kurgan voice. He's got the slick back hair, the sunglasses, the really cheesy leopard print shirt, <laughs> and just just basically commenting on everything that's happening in the voice. It, <laughs> it, it's a lot of fun. Well, that's awesome. Uh, we are running out of time. Do you have any words of wisdom, Hart, you want to share with the audience and, you know, Anyone who wants to get into role playing, wh what are your words of wisdom to them? Don't be afraid. Um, I, I, I know that, I mean, even me sometimes, I've been doing this for years and I'll still get a little nervous myself when I join a brand new role play server. It's natural, it's going to happen. But just have fun with it, be respectful, follow the rules, and you're going to have a great time. Fantastic. What a nice way to end that there for sure. And uh, obviously, thank you so much for being on the show and giving us a chance here. As you can see, we're really, really high quality interview talk show that we do Thursdays at 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Central. That's about all of our Nemesis shows, by the way, everyone watching. So please do follow the channel. Come back more on Mondays, Thursdays, and Sundays. Sundays, we have uh, Dungeons and Dragons hosted by... Uh, for the jester and then we have mayor reynolds who does uh beyond nemesis podcast on mondays same time where he talks about the gaming culture and the latest news around that so a lot of great content me and pally we're just going to try and do this interview thing bring it next level eventually we're going to get picked up by a big network and it's just going to be forgetting something oh what am I forgetting? When, Wednesday night, Nemesis oh. RP. Come on. I've been, I've been pushing. Hart doesn't know that I've been pushing for her to wait, be a part of wait, that. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. That Nemesis RP? Say again. Yeah, that's Tell me more. every, when, Tell every me more. Wednesday. Do you know, you know Galathril? She's part of the Nemesis yes. team. Yes. She is a role player. And I've been doing it on Wednesday nights. We're always looking for more faces to have. <laughs> And where you stream on the Nemesis channel, some role play for however long you want to, and yeah. See, there we'll we go. Talk more. We will yes. definitely yes, talk more. Yes, we will more. talk more. Yes, <laughs> By the way, I do <laughs> apologize. Shoot me, shoot me a message on Discord. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they do uh they do great on the RP. I've watched a few sessions here and there in between my shifts at work, so they they really get it together. They they have so much fun on there. You've done what, Conan and RDO a few times now? It's mostly been Red Dead uh, because I try and uh, mingle with uh, Galathril and, and everyone just so we can uh, get that server up and running. That's fantastic, man. That's, that's so awesome. But yeah, there you go. That's the content on Nemesis right now. We do try to schedule monthly events of doing Valorant with Small Banania. There's also Devour where me and Chardmunk try to play a scary game like that. So lots of good things to keep up with here. Follow us on Twitter at Nemesis GG as well. And you'll see all the fun stuff and all of our creators featured there as well, such as Heart on my sleeve. So thank you again for joining us. You've been an absolute pleasure to have on the show. And I want to thank Pally for being here with me as always. True, uh, true friend oh, and support. Yeah. I'm going to start tearing up now. <laughs> I love you, man. Love you too. <laughs> Thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate it. Yeah, we love you. Bye bye. Be good. Bye.